let's take a look at this heat transfer problem. We have a circular pipe setup and uh, we have a steady laminar flow with constant properties. They have a constant heat flux at the wall of the pipe. You can see it right here. They want us to consider the velocity profile uniform, meaning it's a constant, right? Uh, it is hydrodynamically and thermally fully developed flow. They want us to neglect axial conduction and find nozzle number. Okay, and at the end, when we found the value for it, they want us to compare it to the official nozzle number that we always use from the textbooks for solving all kinds of problems. Let's see what's the difference between the two. Okay, let's get started. Uh, we can see the sketch right here. And since we are dealing with a pipe, we're going to set up the cylindrical coordinate system. Z is along the, uh, the center of the pipe and R is along the radius. So we are dealing with velocity profile and temperature profile. We can get the velocity profile from Navier-Stokes. We can get the temperature profile from the heat equation, the conservation of energy, right? Now, uh, in this setup, we kind of lock out a little bit because they told us that the velocity profile is a constant, it's uniform. Therefore, we do not have to derive it. So we don't need to worry about the conservation of momentum. If it would not be constant, we would have some kind of function there. Then you would have to work on uh, getting the velocity profile from the conservation of momentum. Okay, so that's a constant none of our worries. Let's start with the heat equation. Here it is in cylindrical form. So let's see what can we cross out. A steady state, that means there's no change with respect to time. So the first term is gone. This is a one-dimensional flow. That means that the, well, every molecule of this uh, fluid is heading only in the z direction. None of it is going in the r direction or swirling around in the theta direction, right? So that means this guy we can cross out and this guy we can cross out. They told us to neglect axial conduction. That means this guy is gone. Right? And adjusting a little heads up in case you guys forgot. These are the convection terms, right? And these are the conduction terms. Okay, just a little reminder. Let's see what else can we cross out. We do not deal with any kind of generation, so cross that out. Uh, we're going to ignore dissipation. If they want us to consider it, usually they tell us. Otherwise, anyway, it's a very small term, so you're not going to go too much in error by uh, just crossing it out. And the final term that we can cross out is this one due to fully developed conditions. The delta T, delta, uh, the derivative of T with respect to Z. Maybe this uh, little sketch over here can help you remember that uh, in a constant uh, flux setup, this is how the temperature looks, right? The temperature at the wall or the medium temperature, they both uh, go up in a linear fashion, okay? So that means that the change of T with respect to Z will be a constant. But the heat equation requires to take yet another derivative right here. So taking a derivative of this constant will give us a zero. Therefore, we can cross this guy out. So what do we have left? Bring out every term that we had left, the density, CP, this term right here, and this term right here. That's it. Everything else we crossed out. So here it is. That's all we have. Bring it over to the next page. Here I'm going to take the density and CP and multiply it over to the right hand side. And according to this formula, we can change these three constants into just this one, right? And this is thermal diffusivity. That way we need to deal with only one constant instead of three. Here it is. And to find the temperature profile, that means we need T by itself, right? We don't need all these derivatives and all this other stuff hanging around. 
So that means we need to take an integral with respect to r of both sides of this equation twice. Let's take a look. Re I rearranged some stuff. I took the derivative of t to the left hand side and started collecting up the constants on, over here. And we have this little r still hanging by. First integral, this is the equation that we get. I'm gonna in order so we can have easy access to this derivative of t, I'm going to multiply r to the right-hand side. There you go. And now the derivative of t with respect to r is all by itself. So it's much easier to take an integral of it for the second time. And here it is our second equation that we get a second after our second integral, equation number two. That's why I'm going to call this equation 1, equation 2. There it is. And this is the general solution of the differential equation that we started with, right? This guy. Okay, but we have two unknowns, C1 and C2. We're going to need our particular solution. So in order to get that, we need to figure out our boundary conditions. First one, right at the center, where R is equal to 0 because of symmetry we know that the change of t is uh, with respect to r is 0. And our second boundary condition, r equals big R, because that's the distance of the, that's a constant, the distance of our radius, right? That one over here, we know that the flux is constant. But since that doesn't really help us much, we can put the t equal to t of the wall. But Make sure you don't get uh, confused that this T of the wall is not a constant. We just said that the temperature of the wall goes up, right, linearly as we move along the pipe. So this is a function of Z, which is fine. It'll fall out later on as we progress. But just remember that in this setup, since constant flux at the wall, we are not dealing with constant wall temperature. Okay, this is a function of Z. Let's use these two uh, boundary conditions, plug them in, and we can find C1 and C2. By plugging them back into the general solution, here it is our particular solution, or the temperature profile. All right. Here I just rewrote the temperature profile in a bit more compact form, factored out a few constants. So in order to get to our nozzle number, we have to set up some kind of situation that will allow us to kind of deduct and cancel things out where we're going to end up with all the components that we're going to require for that nozzle number. So we're going to set up a control volume right here at the edge of the pipe wall. Here on one side we have conduction, the other side convection. And the flux coming in with conduction on this side will be equal to the flux going out with convection on the other side. So that's what we wrote up right here. Convection on left hand side, conduction at the right hand side. And this uh, derivative is evaluated at R equals capital R, which means right this location, all right? Exactly at the wall. Okay, in this whole thing, the only unknown that we are dealing with is this guy right here, the medium temperature. So let's write up the formula for it. Uh, this is basically a volumetric flow rate divided by area. Up here we have U times area. Down here we have area. Okay. Let's go ahead and expand these double integrals. So the first integral we can go from 0 to capital R for the dr portion. For the second integral, we're going to go from 0 to 2 pi in a circular fashion, right? For the r d theta part. And these in the middle just stay as they were here in the uh, original setup. At the bottom, the same thing. The only thing is basically missing is this temperature right here. And our velocity from the formula, we're going to replace it with W. 
because for us we are going in the z direction so our component is w okay i factored out some uh, constants and we can see that they're gonna nicely cancel out so inside we have the first integral we have t and r t will stay with this integral right because it is a function of r we can see it right here so it will not really do anything in this integral it's just a constant when it comes to the this integral so it comes out here here we just have r and this integral is all by itself so let's solve them the 2 pi will cancel out and we can uh, go ahead at this point plug in this temperature profile bring it in fill it out now let's go ahead and start solving some of these integrals here i broke it up this one just stayed the same now they are solved right all we have to do is evaluate here you can see evaluated and starting to factor some things out here's rewritten a bit and we finally arrive to this right here which will give us the medium temperature there you go the medium temperature that we've been looking for right here now we can go ahead and come back to that equation and uh, fill it in here it is i just rearranged it a little bit where i brought this term over to the left hand side from the right hand side and that is because remember we had this equation and it was in this form where the wall temperature minus the medium temperature and if we had this one in that setup we can just simply plug it in without any complication that's what we can see right here this guy plugged in right here and here okay and in the parentheses what's happening we're going to take a derivative with respect to r of t t is our temperature profile that we found so plug it in as we found it and don't forget you need to after you took the derivative you need to evaluate it at r there it is left hand side stayed on the unchanged we took a derivative with respect to r these two cancel out because this is this is a function right but it has nothing to do with r it's a function of z so therefore it's a constant when you do a partial with it so this is zero this is there's absolutely no r terms in it so it's zero and all we have left is evaluating this at capital r and after that we can see that a whole bunch of things will cancel out very good this is what we're gonna have left now uh, we're gonna need instead of r we're gonna need a diameter so let's replace that this is the new setup now start thinking ahead what kind of terms do we need for this nozzle number right we have h d and k so we have h d and k very good we had we're getting there now let's clean up these constants and uh, put them in the right form where it looks like this <coughs> so i'm going to multiply by 8 over k that's going to give us this beautiful clean look and there it is hd over k equals 8 just like right here finally we got our answer nozzle number is equal to 8. now they asked us to compare this to the official uh, value of the textbook it is quite different right we got 8 and this one is 4.36 so what is the main reason why we ended up with such a different number well right here we took a major assumption where we consider the velocity profile constant this when it's calculated you take the velocity profile as a function not just straight across like here with it that will, what we gonna that is what is gonna lead you to this correct number okay the velocity profile is not a constant in this setup so if you are interested how to find this prof uh, velocity profile i have another video 
where it's uh, deducted for you also takes the uh, cylindrical coordinate system but you need to use navier stokes and with that you're able to find the velocity profile from it and there it is and if you would have to deduct let's say this nozzle number then you would just do the same problem that we just went through finding the nozzle number the logic is exactly the same except instead of leaving your velocity as w right with a constant no you're gonna get rid of that and plug this in right here and continue calculation and you will end up arriving to this nozzle number okay very good. now sometimes they can ask us that uh, in the beginning remember we cancelled out the medium uh, temperature the the change of the temperature with respect to z okay we said that it is a constant and sometimes they can ask you that hey well, prove it to me that it is a constant okay so this is that proof it proves that you're allowed to cancel it out just uh, take note of it that in this setup the axis is marked with an x not a z the way we had it in our problem right so if you want to go over it and uh, read it how is it proven and you will end up with this i'm gonna just show you pictures of it so it's more clear on the video you can see it better here it is pause the video and go over it in case you're interested otherwise this was the end of the problem thank you guys for watching subscribe and like and have a great day thank you